A tall, dark, handsome man approaches Studio B, looks around, and enters. Hello? Hello? Anybody in here? Hello? Ah, there's no one here. <laughs> the man tiptoes over to the studio workstation. All right, let's see what we have here. Mm -hmm. He picks up a red lobster babe biscuit. Uh, oh, wh what is this? Ew. Ah, here's the mic. Live from the Blind Ability Studio, it's the Tech Ability Show with me, Marlon Parejo. <laughs> and I'm Serena Gilbert, not Siri. And I'm Rocky G, yes Rocky. And I'm Jesse Gamer, the Game Guy Anderson. And I'm Lisa Sally, also known as Lisa Sanger, or, or Sally. And I'm Laurie, this is Laura Abilities, and I run this show. Marlon, do you need any cookies? Yes, yes I do. Jeff walks into Studio B, grabs his sunglasses, and turns to leave. Hey Mars, playing that podcast guy again, huh? <laughs> no, no, no. Well, you have fun and have a good night. See you around. The tall, dark, and handsome man reaches down and flicks on the on-the-air switch. Outside Studio B, a goat approaches. <laughs> Marlon? Oh, yeah. He's in Studio B. <laughs> You're welcome. The on-the-air sign outside Studio B glows brightly. Fade to black. It's Marlon time. <laughs> Welcome to the Tech Ability Show from Blind Abilities. I want to thank you for subscribing to the podcast. And if your podcatcher has the feature of chapters, well, there you go. You can go through the chapters, all these topics, skip around, listen to the ones that, you know, get your fancy going. Hey, why not? In this episode, we're going to be covering using Backtap to skip forward and to add song to playlist. Rocky will talk about the new MagSafe that she just planted on the back of her phone, along with her new Anchor battery pack as well. We'll bring you some news about a new app called Laundry Lens, a way to help recognize the symbols so you know how to care for your clothes. A little story about Microsoft pausing an experimental thing with, you know, virtual computers in the sky. Well, after one day, they put the brakes on that. But they did not put the brakes on being able to use Microsoft 365 on your iPad. We also dive in a little bit on the Activision Blizzard lawsuit. Mm, you might want to pay attention to that one. We also talk a little bit about the audio description that happened during the Olympics. Got better and better. So did the American Golds, right? Hmm. And the AirPod Pros Beta 2 came out and it has a feature called Conversation Boost. Did you hear that? Conversation Boost. As we mentioned what's happened last episode, well now they just rolled out a disappearing feature. Where'd it go? Where'd it go? Jeff gets a rapid COVID test, and we talk about it a little bit. What went up your nose? And Jesse gives us some insight on the technology lending library at State Services for the Blind. And besides all that, there's a lot of stuff that fills in the gaps in between all the topics you just heard about. Without further ado, welcome to Tech Abilities. It's showtime. Hope you enjoy. That sounds kind of spiffy. Yeah, the brain tickler one. The brain tickler. That freaks me out. What had happened was... No, no, no. Oh, goodness. Autonomous computers in the sky. I've just dated myself. <laughs> it's longer like Q-tip and they stick it like way up in your brain. Janky. 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 <laughs> Are we talking Sorty Quest Anonymous coming on here? Lisa and I may have a problem. Yeah. And I'm able to enjoy it right with them. And, you know, when the poor girls fall off their balance beam, I'm able to like, oh. Nice. What is PVP in Sortie Quest? And Player versus player. Oh. I, like, I had to heck? ask what XP meant. I was like, I okay. don't know what XP means. There, there's a song on the radio. What is... Uh, oh, we're geez. not answering that for you. You're going to need to research that yourself. <laughs> yeah, you're going to look that up. <laughs> Go ask Google. He's your friend. I am not answering it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You know what? It's not even the song. It's him. It's Jeff going, what is... <laughs> I mean, it's just he like... Just, he just said it so casually. I'm like... <laughs> the line and the tone was the whole thing. Please keep that in the show, Jeff. Please keep that there. Like, open up the podcast with that. <laughs> Nothing we said matters. Just put that in there. That tone was just so innocent. Like, what does it mean? 
Huh. <laughs> All right, live from the Blind Ability Studio. Welcome to the Tech Ability Show. I'm Jeff Thompson from Friendly Fridley, Minnesota. And with me in the studio, Serena, how are you doing? I am wonderful. How are you in Minnesota? I'm doing just great. Thanks for asking. It's nice here today. Um, I sprinkled the yard. We're not sprinkled. getting any rain. <laughs> sprinkled, yeah, you know, like water sprinkler you can have some of our rain it rains all the time here <laughs> hmm, oh. that's where it is it actually we have flood watches all the time oh wow send it out to our friend out there rocky gomez how are you doing oh i want the rain <laughs> doing good jeff doing good you could use some rain right jealous of serena's rain out here in dry northern california although it's a lot cooler so we're happy about that yeah it has cooled down just a little bit here. It seems like the 80s is like chilly around here nowadays, right? Jesse Anderson, how you doing? Uh, yeah, you are correct. And I am busy, but I am doing pretty well. And yeah, I would definitely say if we could get some of that rain a little bit our way, but especially since I'm on over to North Dakota because I talked to my parents uh, this past weekend and they're really hurting for rain. It's really drought out there. Mm -hmm. And, you know, my, my dad works for a farmer and he does haying and stuff. And like, it seems like all of the crops and hay fields and stuff are just going to be awful this year. Yeah. Unfortunately. We're only seven to nine inches behind. That's why we're in a drought season. So I don't think we'll get seven or nine inches in a week. So now let's go way out east. Lisa Salinger, how are you doing? I'm doing pretty well. You know, can't complain. Well, could, but why? And our weather's actually been pretty moderate. We had temps in the high 70s, low 80s this week. We've had enough rain. It's supposed to get up into the 90s by Friday. My little sister is getting married at the end of August, and it's an outdoor wedding. And so I hope and pray we don't bake, but we'll see. You never know, you know, in this area what you're going to get for weather. Not like they bake in Colorado and California with all the heat, right? <laughs> yeah, <coughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> Except we do the humidity. You share your smoke, I heard on last podcast. God, those fires are crazy out there. Oh. Sorry, I can't do that. Oh, Siri's talking to someone. <laughs> I know. My Saying she Siri can't do it. Out. So bossy. <laughs> I can't do that. How dare you ask me to do something? Yeah, I'm sorry. Did I did I cut you off there, Lisa? No, I think I just ran out of steam. <laughs> I'm I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was about it, really. Well, talk about steamy. I got a message in here, and someone was wondering what kind of biscuits were we talking about. We kind of left in some jibber jabber in the beginning of our oh, last podcast. Cliffhanger. <laughs> yeah. So anybody got an answer to that? Those frozen biscuits that you're all raving about. Well, Red Lobster. Cheddar mm. Bay Biscuits, baby. Cheddar Bay Biscuits. I think we've all seen the mix, but... Oh, yeah, the mix. This sent Rocky on a crusade to look for the frozen ones. Now, this week, before we kind of got started, we were talking about the uh, potato skins chips that are made by TGI Fridays. And Yum. I just looked so on good. Instacart because now I really want them <laughs> They're nowhere in this area. They're tasty. It's cheddar and bacon all the way. Oh. It's so good. Amazon has a variety pack, I see, but it's off the hook. It's like $24 for wow. six Holy of those cow. little bags. It's Dude, like, no, you I can don't get, no, I think on Amazon, they had a thing where you can get like, was it like 40 little bags for like 15 bucks or something oh, well, that's on Amazon? Reasonable. Yeah, I didn't dig very deeply into it. We bring up biscuits we bring up chips and we just get derailed we make everyone hungry i know got the <laughs> get your munchies snacks, get your drinks get your Heck stuff yeah. sit back listen to the podcast yep, exactly call the number and that's 612-367-6093 give us a call i got some chocolate pretzels over here <laughs> I there have enough hummus to feed all our listeners. And I got an outline mm. I better stick to. There you Jeez. go. There you go. Mm. Right out because of the gate. Because that's ever happened. Yeah. <laughs> no, what did happen was Serena put something out there on a text to me, and actually to the group, and she was talking about Backtap would skip forward a song while she's playing it. So it all started when <laughs> what had happened was I thought that with the whole customization of like voiceover gestures that maybe I could find a way to reassign one of the gestures just if I maybe swipe left with two fingers that skips the track forward or whatever. Well, that's mm. not possible in the voiceover gestures, at least as it stands right now, because I'm on iOS 14, which we'll talk about that a little later, too. It's um, <laughs> It's no, I I tried so no, hard. No, I'm on 15 I, and it's not possible. We had to do it the way she's gonna explain. So it's gonna break my right two fingers. No, no, so right no, 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 no. 
No, it, you just can't right. assign skipping the track ahead. Like you can't do something that customized with a voiceover gesture. Um, but what you can do is going to your accessibility settings and then go under touch and turn back tap on. Then go to your shortcuts. And I created two custom shortcuts. The first one I created was to skip the track. And the second one I created, which was a little more complicated and frustrated me for a good hour because it wouldn't work until I figured out what I was doing wrong, was to take the current track that is playing and automatically add it to your playlist. Because I like to add songs to like my favorites playlist. Once I had those built, then I went and assigned those shortcuts cuts to either the double back tap which skips the track forward and then the triple back tap adds the song that's currently playing to my favorite playlist and you do it's that awesome. back in settings again under touch and there so yep but you have to have a shortcut made to be able to you assign have to have it. it first mm -hmm. yep so i do have a question about that you and you're tying the specific let's say the skip shortcut the skip ahead shortcut skip forward that only that only applies to like one app it's not like a universal like oh i can skip forward in whatever app i'm playing like if i'm using let's say itunes or pandora it's, it's in a category music. of music it just says music so i think it yeah. applies to all of them actually okay because i use but i, I don't mean, use, I use anything Google, else yeah i use yeah. youtube music yeah but I'm just wondering, like, if I was jumping between, like, podcast episodes in an app or if I went from, like, to YouTube music or... No, in YouTube, I was listening to just a YouTube and I set my phone down earlier and it did not skip. I set it down too hard. You know how that happens with Backtap. But it did not skip. It didn't do anything to that particular app. After we're done recording, I'll test it with Pandora before we kind of wrap things up. Because mm -hmm. when it was the skip forward, it, it literally just says when you're building the shortcut, just skip forward. Mm -hmm. So I think it would do any audio that's playing. It probably wouldn't do it with like video. No, there's another section for video. Mm -hmm. If you go through all this stuff under Backtap, Backtap is pretty, it's, they got- You can do a lot. Yeah, it's it's yeah. extremely customizable. But, but they do have a section to off a little bit more into like the audio and then the video or some mm -hmm. other segments and, and stuff like that. Don't use it as a launcher. <laughs> when I did do the skip forward, it did say right below it, a thing popped up and it says something like skip to, to the next track in your music. You did give me a great idea, though, like when you said, you know, add it to a certain playlist, like I kind of want to see if I can do it through YouTube music. And I don't know if it, it lets you do that or not, because I when I was doing I mean, when I was building the shortcut to add to the playlist, it had a spot where it was like your music and then it let you choose the playlist from music. I don't know because I don't use any other music apps like I bet you could. Oh. It's probably just you just got to just probably drill down a lot. Just deeper. try yeah. it. Yeah, just try yeah. I might have to it. explore that because that sounds kind of spiffy. I love it because it's such a pain to add something to a, a playlist if you think about it. Yeah, it's buried. And if you're listening to the music at the same time, it's just such a pain. Can't you flick down on the song? I see if you're outside no, the not, music not app, to, you mean? No, even no. in the music app, it's... Can't you just swipe down on the... But then you flick to add to playlist and then you have to find the playlist. It's... It's pretty, yeah. it's cumbersome. <laughs> in YouTube music, it's like a three-step process. You click the little dot, dot, dot menu. It brings up the menu. Then you say, add to yeah. playlist. And then you choose yeah. the playlist. So if you could just say, nope, add, use if a gesture to add to a certain playlist. If you could just triple tap the back, it saves so much time. That'd be beautiful, actually. That's <laughs> huh. a great idea. Well, what does cool. work is what Serena did. And it was kind of interesting because I started digging in a little, drilling down a little bit mm -hmm. and stuff. And then all of a sudden she came back with all this happy emojis and you know <laughs> i did it nah, 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 yeah, stuff like that and so i i got it but i had to clarify a few things with her but yeah if someone wants to try some of these things go in there try it try your back tap and be creative and share it with us and you can give us a call at 612-367-6093 that's the number i will say when you set up the add song to playlist part what i did is you would think logically you just pick the shortcut that says add song to playlist but you have to choose media or select media first mm. so that it's holding the current song that's playing and it's like little brain and then taking that current song that's playing and adding it to the playlist like you have to really hold its hand step by step or the shortcut won't work i was so frustrated when i was building it the other day hmm. <laughs> um but i finally figured it out you can share that shortcut right probably yeah, yeah, I'll send it to you. Yeah, send it to me and I'll put it in the show notes so mm -hmm. other people can, other people, those other, those listeners out there could actually give it a whirl. Yeah, I can share both of them because I have two separate ones set up. Mm -hmm. Rocky. Jeff. How you doing? I'm doing good. How are you doing? What's on the back of your phone? <laughs> An Apple logo. <laughs> Smart Alec. <laughs> How about a MagSafe battery pack? A mag. Oh, I thought you were. 
I thought you were asking me about my back tap that I had for a whole three hours and took off because I kept launching the app that I installed it to launch. Mm. Yeah, they're, the batteries are pretty cool because the phones are so thin now that even in comparison to the iPhone 11, I think because of the edges, they just seem really thin. So when you put the, especially the Apple battery, it definitely makes the phone a little fatter. But mm-hmm. if you ever used a battery case before, it's it's really nothing. It's a good solid, you know, magnetic. It has a good grip on the battery. It's not like you're going to get up by the phone or the battery and lose one half or the other. The MagSafe is pretty strong anyway. The ring is probably an inch wide. I find that it's pretty sturdy. I'm really torn. Everything everybody says is true. Everything everyone says is true. It's, I don't like to, it's fine. It's a battery. It's okay. I like that there is no switch on the Apple battery. And that's one of those really odd things that you didn't know you would like. like. Yeah. I always have been this way. I've never been a fan of turn it on when your battery gets low because you're still ultimately taxing your phone's battery first. So I love that when I attach an Apple battery, the Apple battery, for example, it's, it's just giving the phone power until the battery's empty and then it switches over to the phone battery. I like that better. I don't, I'd re- much rather tax the life and the charge, number of charge cycles on a battery that I can replace for, you know, $50 or $100 rather than having to go. Although the irony now, the iPhone battery costs more probably than it would if I were to take my 12 Pro in and say, hey, replace my battery. You know, maybe not not quite, but it is a pretty expensive battery for all that. The Anchor battery is, is half the cost. Definitely not made by Apple, but it's still a very nice battery. If you're on the fence about which one to get in money site, the Anchor battery is respectable. It does have a switch, so it's going to come on and off when it thinks it you're done charging or you you've reached 80% or whatever and it thinks you need to shut down now to conserve it'll just stop charging so when you want it you have to turn it on again but you can just check on your phone check your battery level and it'll say as if it's charging or not right yeah, that, and that's the other thing with the Apple batteries, you have support so you can see all of your charging statuses mm-hmm. whereas, you know, with other batteries you don't see that. Here's the big question. Did you plug the phone, the lightning port of the phone and the battery in at the same time? So <laughs> I know you were tempted. <laughs> I didn't. Okay. I know the Apple one, of course, will handle it. And will they say, you know, reverse charge and everything. The Anchor one, I, 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 I just didn't do that. The advantage to having a second battery pack, of course, is that you can charge one while you're using the other one. So mm-hmm. I've been pretty hard on my phone for the last year now. So I can tell that my battery life has taken a little bit of a hit. So now I can top off without having to charge by four or five in the afternoon they're nice they they add some bulk but it's not too bad i think if you have the 12 pro mini it'll fit the battery pack almost exactly so it's a little smaller but this is a little more streamlined so it's good good laundry lens it's an app for ios it helps you do your laundry you've been giving it a whirl there serena yeah, I just discovered that as I was, as <laughs> Jeff sends out the notice, all right, just throw us links here. And then all of a sudden the, the group message is going crazy. As I was looking through news, I saw that and I was like, there's no way this will be accessible. But sure enough, I downloaded it. And what it does is it uses your phone's camera and you can point it at the tags on your clothing, um, specifically the tags that you would think would have the care instructions on mm-hmm. it. And it will scan it for the symbols that are on there and then tell you the different different things that that particular item says you can or can't do like you dry clean or wet wash or that's what one of mine said one of them said hand wash yeah things like that so it's pretty cool no bleach do not iron <laughs> do not dry clean right, rocky when you came out of the closet you confirmed that it did work right so i was just looking at <laughs> shirts in the closet i it has a flashlight function so i thought i wonder if i can turn the flashlight on without having to pull everything out and look at it one at a time so i did that and i was able to just stick my hand around the corner into the closet and it let me see the contents of three different shirts and I was able to see that I'm not supposed to send one of them to the dry cleaner and I have sent it to the dry cleaner on multiple occasions <laughs> and it says do not dry clean. It's kind of neat. It'll tell you, you know, do not bleach or tumble dry on warm or iron on low heat. I think one of them said they find these different points, different symbols, and it'll try to tell you you hold the camera steady and you get a little bit of haptic feedback and it'll say well found one symbol two symbols three symbols
symbols, whatever. It worked really well. I even just sticking my hand in the closet, pointing it vertically at the tag. Mm -hmm. I was surprised. What I really wish we had is reliable color identification. Yes. Yeah. That'd be nice. People come out with these apps and they say, oh, this is going to be the greatest thing. And it doesn't work even on a par with the Mm -hmm. commercial ones. And I really don't quite understand why that's the case. Hmm. Because they try to get to, like, color is just so hard because it's about lighting and stuff, too. Yeah. Because yeah. I'll even ask right. my husband, like, is this blue or black? And he's like, I think it's black. But then I'll turn the light on. He's like, oh, it's blue. Yeah. Like, yeah. I think it's just so, so hard. There is um a thing. Uh, I think it's out of, uh like, a, you know how they do those, like, kind of hackathon type things where it's like, come up with a really cool product. I think there was a college in Canada that came up with this app. And I don't think it's really functional yet. But it's called Closet. And what it'll do, and it takes the clothing manufacturers being on board with it. Um, So we'll see how that <laughs> what happens with that yeah. but it'll have a qr code on the tag that when it's put in front of the camera will tell you you know what the item is the colors the the, the care instructions yeah, all i read that. about this it looks really promising mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's, it does the sad thing is there's a lot of apps that you know you see the the concept and it looks really promising and then you don't hear anything more about it mm-hmm. yeah I think this is good because I know on my washer, I have some settings, especially on the dryer. I go way down the medium, then the medium high, high. There's some stuff you just don't want to put on high. That'll be good information to know. Audio description for the Olympics, the experience. Serena? Well, I know when this airs, the Olympics will have had their closing ceremony and everything, but I'm going to preface this with, I have never cared one iota about the Olympics ever in my life, ever. (laughs) (laughs) Like maybe a figure skating thing, maybe a gymnastics thing. But this year, the audio description has been coming through. The first week, it was a little rough, only because the volume levels weren't really right. You could barely hear Mm -hmm. the describers. This last week, it's been really good. They've been coming in clear. They're describing things really well. The only thing that's hard is if you're one that kind of gets overstimulated, it's a little hard sometimes because with it being live audio description, they will talk over the announcers. Ah. So sometimes you've got two things at the same time and that can be really hard to process sometimes. So it's about figuring out, well, what do I want to pay attention to right now? And and do I want to hear these stats that the announcers are saying or do I want to hear what they're describing is going on on the screen? But I've found it really enjoyable. Honestly, my son's been wanting to watch it a lot. My husband's been watching it and I'm able to enjoy it right with them. And, you know, when the poor girls fall off their balance beam, I'm able to like, oh, goodness, like, you know, same thing, same time. <laughs> That's really neat. That's, I think audio description over the last few years has really come a long ways and now to be doing live events. I mean, Ira does live events now and then. And mm-hmm. but this is we're talking this is around the world, basically. Well, at least networks that we're receiving, we have an option to be able to have audio description and with it being the type of i mean it's extremely technical audio description when they're telling what you know flips and tumbles they're doing they're using the technical words they're saying you know a back handspring with a front twist and it's like this took some work yeah (laughs) it's really really fun to watch (laughs) jesse you've been doing any back handsprings or anything lately don't forget with the front twist (laughs) yeah with the front twist (laughs) not a chance uh no no that kind of thing and my my coordination that's just a disaster waiting to happen (laughs) you sent me an article that i thought was really cool it's like having a pc in the sky with diamonds? No, not PCs not with diamonds. With I was just thinking of a song like <laughs> PCs in the sky. Oh man. No, they're calling it like this Windows 365 and what they're doing is right now it's only available to businesses, but you know, eventually and I I also just sent an article where they opened it up earlier this week for um you could get like a free trial and it it, it was so popular that people wanted to try it out and everything that they had to temporarily rarely postpone future trials until they got more server space but <laughs> because it was so popular that people were wanting to try it i can't believe shut it down in just one day basically you can kind of customize what sort of spec machine you want it's kind of like running a virtual machine like you could do locally but you could do it in the cloud but the unique piece of this is that you'll be able to run 
or access this virtual machine through a Windows machine. You could access it theoretically through a Mac or on an iPad. And let's say you had a Bluetooth keyboard for your iPad. This could really open up some really interesting potential because I'm looking at it for even what we do at work. There are some people who they primarily live in, let's say, you know, Apple land. They, they really work with the Mac, but maybe there's a class that they're taking and they need to use some PC software. I genuinely would love to try this sort of cloud machine because I want to know how that information gets fed down to your local device. Because, you know, typically when you do like a lot of remote software, it's just basically sho shoving a constantly refreshing image back at you. And so that's why a lot of these remote services clients aren't screen reader accessible. But if it's actually pushing some data down, and if it's pushing audio, like audio and video, you know, and it's doing all the processing in the cloud, what I'm curious is, let's say, again, you're having somebody with like a Mac or an iPad, they could subscribe to this uh, Windows 365 and then use a screen reader. They could use Narrator, they could use NVDA, um, theoretically Magnifier or something like that and they could use the software that they wanted to, or you could even use it for testing, you know? Maybe I don't have a new enough machine to run Windows 11, but I would like to poke around at it or any other reason that one would use a virtual machine. So assuming that the accessibility is there, I could see some potentially cool use cases for this. Yeah, I wonder if you could run it on a Chromebook. Yeah, because you're doing it through a browser. Because Chromebooks are so inexpensive. Right. You know, like this could open up a lot exactly. of possibilities. To me, it just depends on what kind of keyboard interface that you're going to have, what kind of input interface you're going to have. What this really reminds me of when I was a kid, I used to learn basic computer programming, we had a teleprompter. This goes way back. But you were tapped into a database that you played games from a distance. So this, it's like it's going back to all your computers are going to be on, you know, like you want to protect your computer. Oh, no, no one can get into my computer. But now your computer's in the cloud, a virtual mm -hmm. computer. It's like, hmm. It's a little scary. Yeah, I mean, I can see some definite hurdles for it, but I'm genuinely intrigued and it kind of has some interesting potential, I think, and I would like to try it out. This isn't, correct me if I'm wrong, this virtual computer thing is not necessarily new, correct? Because I know I, I used to work somewhere where we had like a computer lab. There were computers all throughout the computer lab. They were brand new, but none of them actually had like a hard drive on them. They were all... Yeah. Virtualized. That's what I was talking about, the teleprompter type style. Yeah, it's a similar concept to like a dumb terminal system, but it's mm -hmm. the difference is that you can kind of, you're not tied to like, oh, you have to access this one server or whatever. Like, mm -hmm. it's cool because you can say, you know, if you don't need as much of a powerful machine, you can say, I would like to subscribe to a machine that has this much ram or mm -hmm. you know this type of processor CPU. so it is yeah. still and very different okay the other thing for testing what i think could be cool is let's say that you want to test the performance and you want to test like oh does this software run correctly can this piece of software run on a very low spec machine like a surface go that only has four gigs of ram I could basically subscribe to a machine and say, I want a low end machine. And then I can test against like a low spec mm -hmm. or a high spec. What I really see this really coming into play is say you have an office and you have 25 people in there. Instead of buying 25 separate computers, you may be able to have 25 virtual computers under subscription as a business type of thing where you could probably set up that these can share here this can all do this you know but you all have your individual virtual computer in a sense but you'd still have to have a device to use it though of right some sort I, I know but but the specs could be different though i get right. what you're saying yeah, yeah. and yeah. what also yeah. could be you know you make a good point because when you go into let's say with everyone doing more remote work and if companies continue to work this way you don't necessarily have to hire somebody local so instead of giving them like oh, okay we got to buy a company machine and then send it out to them the company's in minneapolis but own. they're out in california they can use their own machine but then log into the company machine mm -hmm. over the internet and still have access to like a virtual domain and share things with their colleagues. Right. So yeah, there's really interesting potential. Mm -hmm. Kind of like autonomous cars will be owned by fleets. Now all the business computers will be autonomous computers in the sky. <laughs> it's scary for big companies to think of that because you would think it exponentially opens up like the security oh. pieces of things, like thinking through all that. Well, that's why we use VPN, you know. But it would also make things like deploying software and troubleshooting people's 
systems. Oh, geez. Do you remember going to the college library? <laughs> How'd that work for you guys? Actually, my college was amazing. They had a license where it was like roaming licenses. So you could sit at any computer and hit Control Alt J and JAWS would come on. Yes, roaming profiles. And they had it networked and they did it the right way. Mm-hmm. The first place I worked at it was like that too. We set it up. My college didn't have a library. I mean, they had a library, but not computers. I've just hmm. dated myself. There were a couple <laughs> of way up on the fourth floor in the science department, and that was it. Our university, they were touting themselves. It was the first laptop university in the country. Everyone had their own laptop. That was pretty cool. Well, this is similar hands-on. Now, Windows 365 can be ran on your iPad. Mm -hmm. Same thing, yeah. I thought the article was just funny. I sent a quote to everyone. For those of you who have listened to us for a little while, you'll know a few episodes ago, the word of the week was janky. Mm -hmm. And this particular author decided to talk about how in the past, you know, running Windows on, I think it was, he was talking about running Windows on web virtually (laughs) was was janky. (laughs) I think Jeff has pulled all the janky references out of the final edit, so I don't think they know quite how many times the word is gotten uttered in passing in the during the course of creating content for tech abilities but it's a word that kind of comes <laughs> that episode he left it in there quite a bit <laughs> did he I, yeah. I thought he took it out but it's surprising that microsoft actually has an app for that and you know <laughs> that it's going to be collaborating to put a whole system onto an ipad just interesting mm-hmm. i'm more surprised that apple's allowing them to yeah do. that's what i'm actually yeah but they already by. have office apps on the i devices yeah but this is completely like almost oh i know in a way, you know, like turning an iPad into a Surface. But I think Apple will get some of that pie. They'll get some of the money from that. And so... Oh, probably. Not if Microsoft's smart about it, because there's some apps that will not let you... Like Audible, you can't buy a book on Audible in iOS. You have to go to Safari and do it. So if they're smart about it... Or from your wish list, which is kind of nice. Like if you have credits. If you you have credit, yes. If you have credit, you can do it. But if you have no credit and you just want to flat out buy a book or buy more credit, they won't let you. I was going to say, wait a minute. I buy books on Audible all the time. That's how I do it, though. I have credits. Yeah. I think it was only even a year ago. Yeah, you couldn't even use your recent. credits. It was Kindle, I remember. Yeah, oh, the yeah. credits thing is a recent yeah. Uh, addition. Yeah. Well, even Kindle. Because they're avoiding the 30%. You got to go to the Amazon. The Amazon. Mm-hmm. Yep. Last time we talked about the game that is Swarty Quest. I heard nothing. I see it all the time now, now that oh, we we talked about it. And it's like, Lisa and wow. I may have a problem. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Especially on the weekends when they have Are we like, talking Swarty Quest Anonymous? Yeah. Well, <laughs> now they've made it more addicting is if you play it, and I need to play it today, because they'll give you a gift every day if you play no, it wait, once when a day. did this oh, start? Really? In the last update. And they're oh. good gifts. It's not like 10 coins or something. It's legit well, stuff. I must so. not be living right. I don't think I've gotten that one yet. I haven't played it in like a week, oh, so geez. I will have to check into that. Yeah. Just update it, and then eventually it's on, it's on the front page. You'll have a little gift button. Cool. Well, the thing that's been getting me is the weekend. Like you can gather Hours. twice as many resources <laughs> or whatever. Or experience. And so mm-hmm. I tend to like set aside, you know, like, okay, while mm-hmm. I'm doing this mindless thing, I can, can play Sortie Quest. And I don't think you were in, Jesse and I were talking, this will show what a weird human being I am. The thing I want to know most about that game is there's this one kind of fight for those who aren't familiar with it, where you're fighting, they call it a boss, but basically it's like a yes. higher Did being. Someone and say there's my name? this music with vocals. And I, I turned the music off. <laughs> I dearly, dearly want to like know the what music. they're saying. I do too. I like the music in Solara better. That that had cool music. I was, I would hear that music in my head when my phone was. You know what you when can, I wasn't in the game. You know what you can do, Lisa. Though is if there's a Sortie Quest group, if any, which <laughs> I bet you. I'm not on the evil Facebook. Oh, okay, I was gonna say the developer is very active in that group and answers yeah. questions. I had my account hacked way too many times, and so I'm not a Facebooker anymore, and I'm really happy with that. <laughs> 
But if you're on YouTube channels, check out... Illegally Cited. Illegally Cited, that's right. If you want to get some experience on it, Jesse's been experienced on it. He's got the experience. He's put a little demo out there, he, a run-through on his YouTube channel, Illegally Cited. Go check that out. I hope you accepted me in your Game Center request, Jesse. I, I did. Okay. It never did. tells you. Like, it doesn't tell you anything. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, I did. I saw it the other day, and I did. Yep, I did add you. So uh, hopefully you're in my clan now. So We were also... T- talking about jesse especially was talking about blizzard and that's a company activision blizzard and something hit the fan this last week yeah last episode we were talking all positively about blizzard because diablo 2 resurrected we were talking about that kind of upcoming role-playing game and they're adding accessibility features including text-to-speech and a bunch of other things right around that time of the episode blizzard the last two weeks or so things have been really just going crazy with activision blizzard and basically what happened was is that california sued Activision Blizzard, they did this like two plus year investigation into some of the company practices. And I mean, I'm not going to go into a lot of the details here. You can basically look up the lawsuit documents for yourselves. There's a lot of stuff that happened that it really had a lot to do with company culture and behavior and just really inappropriate, like a lot of like harassment and sexual harassment, especially toward women and even some stuff going on with men. And they let this kind of behavior happen and sadly the worst part is is it's not just Activision Blizzard this is kind of a thing with like technology and gaming companies in general so they had this lawsuit last Wednesday they had like over a thousand people kind of did this walkout thing in protest of what was happening and the executives response to this uh, lawsuit that had come out. And then with just within the last two days or so, the last yesterday and today, the head of Blizzard and I think their PR person actually both resigned. And it's just, it's really sad. It's really disgusting. But like, I just, we were talking so positively last week or last episode about the cool accessibility things. And there are good, the thing is there are good people that are, you know, that are just trying to work and trying to do their thing. And so there's kind of been this argument on Twitter and social media and everything where, you know, do you boycott the company? Do you boycott the game or the software? Or then if you, you know, like, you know, people who are doing the good work and, you know, I've, I've uh, heard posts like just today where somebody was saying it hurts that people aren't supporting the company because we're still here and we don't want to get laid off if our product doesn't do well. So it's like this weird gray line, but I'm curious to hear, especially like the female co-hosts, like, you know, kind of their thoughts, because that's a, well, that's what a lot of this is really targeting, or a lot of this behavior in tech and gaming just in general has been this culture that really has to change. Well, this is a tech show, and we got three female co-hosts on here. Right. And we haven't had any complaints yet, have we? Anybody? Well, Jeff, when you figure out what the answer to that question was that you asked me earlier, you might feel differently. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I really oh, am whoa, just kidding. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> I'm really glad that stuff like this is coming to light because it seems like, you know, the last few years, the way things were ran back in the 70s, the 80s and 90s, and even up to 10 years ago, even a few years back, it's great that it's coming to light right now. And I think everyone should be able to work on equal terms and have a safe environment and stuff. So yeah, absolutely. good for exposure. I guess. Well, that's the wrong word to use. Good for um, this coming to light. Mm-hmm. Rocky? Serena? I'm not touching that one. <laughs> it's it's like most issues. There's not an easy... No. There's not an easy right answer. I feel especially not qualified to speak about it because I haven't really been part of the gaming culture. And one time I had someone make a sexist comment to me about a podcast I was participating on. And I didn't think... And it probably is, but I didn't think this is a symptom of a larger problem. I thought, oh, there goes this person again being an idiot. I think both were true. It was really uncalled for. I'm sure it is an industry-wide thing, but I think sometimes 
there's a place for gently calling individuals out. You know, if someone is doing something and it's a little uncomfortable, if everyone else is laughing at something and you're the one to say, hey, that's not cool, you know, that can be hard, but like I said, I don't know what the right and wrongs are, but I think that we as individuals have a lot more power to fix it and a lot more responsibility for our own attitudes than we realize. Mm-hmm. It's going to be interesting how this plays out, especially in the gaming world, because, you know, it's, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, because there's a lot of talk about equal rights and like people making the same amount for, you know, the same work that they're doing. I mean, it's it's just ridiculous how some of the gaps are, but there's a lot of resistance. A lot of the game industry wants to, you know, have things like union protection so that some of the stuff doesn't happen, but a lot of these companies have lawyers and different things that sort of really kind of block that from happening. But I think that's really where I, I wonder if we're on the verge of seeing some change in that area. I, I think so, because a lot of these companies, just like Upstart, it's like Google when they first started up. It was kind of interesting, you know, flip flops for work attire. But these gaming companies, they start like from friends getting together and then they start the company. So it's really organic how they develop and systemically what is ingrained into the place over the years probably has been going on for quite a long time so now that Mm -hmm. it reaches this point and you know good a thousand people walked out and it's bringing some light to it and i hope it gets some positive attention here so something gets done and people can have a safe environment to work in yeah another thing that came out and this was interesting when i first saw it the airpod pros started a beta the firmware was betaized i guess it was the second one came out because they didn't put it in the first one and it has to do with conversation boost now rocky and i we love this airpod pro stuff and i always turn it on to hear the birds tweet from a mile away and all sorts of stuff the floor creaks and stuff but now they got beam focused microphones on them so you can pay attention to a conversation like in public and tune in to a conversation i think that's really cool where this is going with airpod pros and basically hearing aids hearing devices in a sense yeah i think people don't realize still you hear a lot about noise cancellation but i think some of these other features are really kind of buried sort of in the whole myriad of things that airpods can do but they really have invented essentially hearing devices that anyone can pick up and and customize and tune to their own specific preferences and they're amazingly powerful and I think for me even more than the Apple Watch believe it or not since the advent of the iPhone the AirPods Pro are probably some of the most powerful in terms of wearables just because they're so free of latency I tend to use transparency all day long now it's funny you mentioned this because both of my AirPods Pro are one is up in I have Apple coverage until October. Those are fine, but the ones that expire in January, I have a problem with one of my mics, so I'm going to take them in and swap them out while I still can. I can't imagine life without them anymore. They're just phenomenal. Mm -hmm. And I think they're going to be kind of the key, especially for us as blind people, as we zero in on some of this, not just with gaming and traveling and VR and all of these different scenarios, positional audio, different areas where we use audio, but things like music where we never really anticipate. I know, Serena, you don't like the positional audio or the spatial Spatial. audio. I know that (laughs) irritates you but it's like sitting down with a headphone amp for me i know the music it's just amazing it, it's mind-boggling just to boost some of the instruments and be able to hear the music a little differently so i find spatial audio fun to play with this is sort of another area where the airpods pro just shine and i'm really curious this beta to see what we're able to do with it as blind people in particular when we start having to be out in public and traveling in groups of people again how advantageous is this going to be to being able to hear i already see some advantage in in certain places where i can hear certain things with just a slight boost and maybe that's just because i'm not as young as i used to be and i think i have probably a tiny bit of hearing loss off the top although i hear pretty well but i can tell by boosting the highs with my airpods that like you said i can hear things from a block away and that's really amazing 
amazing when you start getting into some really open, echoey public places to be able to tell like where the building line is when you're out mm-hmm. in the middle of what feels like 90 miles of parking lot or whatever. So I'm curious to see like, will this help me navigate or help me orient or even zero in on, hey, those people were talking over there when I came through. So that means, you know, I have to go 10 feet past them to find my table or whatever. How many cues will it just give me surreptitiously just by virtue of the fact that I have them in my ears? Well, I think one of the biggest things is as people get older a little bit, conversations start to blend together, especially when you're in a crowd, like a group of 20 in a room, everyone's talking, mugs are clinking and stuff, and trying to decipher... Yeah, how long has it been since we've done that? (laughs) Right. But when you're trying to decipher who's talking, what's going on, and everything like that, it's hard to pick out because it it starts to clash. It's kind of like public noise cancellation in a sense. I think this is really cool that they're doing this for the ears. Even though I don't have too much hearing loss, although Lori will say it's very selective. (laughs) (laughs) It's really neat. If you do experiment with it and do turn it on and you forget that it's on, it's really cool to hear magnified in a sense. I say it's magnified because I don't have loss, but it's like, wow, all these other sounds that you hear two rooms away but it is magnified it is right because you don't normally have the hearing loss but now you're enhancing what you normally would have and you're able to pull in sounds that maybe you would hear but you wouldn't necessarily be able to identify them now you maybe boosted the highs a little bit so now they're sharp and they're clear and you can really tell, oh gosh, that's uh, someone hitting a metal pipe or that's like a screwdriver. It's like taking steroids for your eardrums, man. Yeah. And it's it's, it's a cool. rush. It's it's a rush because I did it for a while. And what's really neat about it, they have built in there. I started the saw up one time. As soon as the saw started up, it cut the sound out because that was too, oh, too loud. Yeah, completely. I think if it gets mm. up near 90 I or 100 on a decibels, train. it's something, through the train. Yeah, something really that you shouldn't magnify if it hit, hits a certain level it just cut way down and i was like whoa what happened Mm -hmm. they don't even know there's a sound there i've been next to moving trains and i can barely hear i'm shouting i mean they're freights they're big they're loud they're noisy and people say i don't hear anything it's mind-boggling how much they cancel we're talking about whatsapp last episode and now they just came out with something that they have on snapshot something about disappearing i'm guessing it's probably going to be similar to the way that snapchat functions or functions not that I use Snapchat because it's not really accessible. But I know Snapchat was like the original app where, you know, pictures could be sent and after they're viewed, be self-destructed, I guess, essentially. So they're probably just taking a page out of Snapchat's book there and applying it into WhatsApp. Mm -hmm. We play once. Well, it, it just seems like they're really going into the, I wouldn't even say it's privacy. I, I call it sneaky. You know, I don't know. I they want say. you to think it's private, right? They want you to think it's, oh, if I send this, it'll self-destruct. So it doesn't matter. I can send it. It's okay because nobody's going to see it. They want you to think that it's private, even though, what did you say, Serena? Somebody could screenshot Definitely it with or... a picture. It's a little harder with a video, obviously. Unless you're like really sneaky and you're like screen recording or whatever. <laughs> and you're ready to yeah, go. Yeah. But with a video, it's definitely harder to, to kind of capture that, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. Not impossible, know. though. I'm sure someone will figure it out. <laughs> it just seems like all the new features that I hear coming out of WhatsApp, some things are good. But lately, this is the stuff that I'm hearing. It's like, wow, privacy. You know, you hear about different countries and stuff or different groups, militias or whatever, using these different things that are encoded and everything like that. And it's like, just wow. You know, it's like, and here we're just goofing with it, you know, and some people are using these as real tools of survival. I'm happy when I can uh, change the speed. <laughs> there you go. I'm going to start this one out. I did go to Chicago and we did play and the Utica, the tryouts for the U.S. blind hockey team got canceled because of the COVID, the high rates that are going up. I guess several people caught it down in, in Chicago. I had to go in, get a rapid test. It came up negative, so that's good. Can you share your experience with getting a COVID test? I know it sounds like we Weird, but I'm obviously Lisa. You might have had one. I've not. I've never had one. I don't know if Rocky or Jesse's had one. I would Dude, actually, if you would, if you don't mind. <laughs> I've heard varying reports. Me I think too. there's a couple different types of them you can yeah, get. The brain tickler one, and the- yeah, that's <laughs> yeah, the one that, I'm, that scares me. I'm terrified me. of it. That's why I was so I careful. <laughs> Called CVS up, and they got CVS my chart. 
I had to download the app and I scheduled an appointment and it was accessible to do. So that was fine. I did go up there and I went in and you're separated from the other group. They quarantine you. <laughs> it's just a, it's just like an ice house. Remember those warming rinks or whatever? Oh. Mm-hmm. It's just a box. The person's on the one side. I'm on the other side with all the plexiglass and everything mm-hmm. like that. And on my side, there was something I could wash my hands. But basically, I just stood there. And she brought across this tube. And I told her I was visually impaired, so I couldn't make it out too well. But it was a Q-tip. And she said, just stick it up your nose and move it around. And then move it to the other side and move it around. So you do it yourself. No, I didn't go deep nosing. Not always. You know what I mean? Yeah. See, that's interesting because the one I heard, they take this longer like Q-tip and they stick it like way up in your brain. For like 15 seconds. The brain tickler. That freaks me out. It's not. Well, there's a way to make that so you don't want to smack the person who's doing the test on you they had suggested this to me because i had two different tests Mm -hmm. and one he's like this needs to be in your nose for 15 seconds oh goodness what like he went in out and i'm like how did you even get anything and so the second time she's like okay this is going to be pretty deep and it could be uncomfortable but (laughs) what you need to do is tip your head back and you don't just want to tip it back a little you want to tip it back like as far as it goes Mm -hmm. because i did that and they stuck it in and i'm like oh that's not really bad i mean i could tell it was deep but it didn't hurt Mm -hmm. but then i'm like okay I'm really kind of, I've got my head really far back here. You know, am I just being in the extreme? And I leaned my head forward a little bit, and all of a sudden, it started to burn, and my eyes started to oh, water. Man. And oh, wow. I've passed the tip on to other people, and they've come back and said, you know, you're right if you keep your head back. Oh, that's interesting. It interesting. really It's does. probably a gravity thing. I Maybe don't some know, people don't but know about that. Woo, the difference like but not all not all the tests go that deep anymore. Like I've heard other people right. say that they just swab like it's you worth know, the, the front try part of your nose. But like a horrible. two or three inch head tilt made the difference between well this isn't great, but I can deal to I need to scream. You know, yeah. it really That's made a difference. Good to know. CBS had a video that I could watch and what was really nice about it is they said don't go up your nose, go into your nose and back, not yes. up. Mm. Because people People think that your nose is like a straight shot, like you go up. Mm -mm. Any kid who ever stuck his or her finger (laughs) on her nose, his or her (laughs) nose, uh, remembers that it doesn't go straight up. It kind of slants back. Mm -hmm. Plus, I've read detailed, two detailed descriptions that have given me nightmares about like uh, in years past where they did like ice pick surgery. And so, oh, God, yeah, Yeah. Yeah. no, 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 I needed to know about the anatomy of that area. (laughs) Yeah, pleasant dreams. Within 45 minutes, I got a call and I was negative. So that, oh my goodness, mine was like four or five days of like, wow. Because now they do the rapid test. She calls me up and she's like on the voice. And the winner is... And then all of a sudden the drums play and the music plays and they go really? from face. Are you serious? Dude, no, actual she's, drums. And I actual have. Music? Well, not really, but I was oh. waiting. She I was, said. I was gonna say you mean she like had middies there and she just cranked you it watch, up. Gotta watch Jeff and, because yeah. anything just, you say, at least one of us is going to take you literally. Is yes. she like a celebratory That's what it seems like. nurse? Okay, that I'm waiting for the results. Did it feel like a, a long wait? wait? Oh my gosh, it did. She goes. And now I got your results. She pauses. <laughs> and then it's just silence. How was it already? I said, all right. <laughs> and? You're like, I'm still here. I didn't hear okay. you. Okay. She me. says, your results are. And then she pauses again. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh my gosh. Slap you. Oh, then she God, says negative, And I'm just like, whew. It was like you were, you know what that reminds me of? <laughs> you guys are going to laugh. Are. Maury Povich, <laughs> you are not the father. <laughs> you're like, you know, it just makes me wonder if she was a closet sadist, you know, like, oh my you're she does this so many times are... and she's no, like, that's, I'm going to mess mean, with this. Especially no, in a medical if she was a closet one, she would have t- grabbed that Q-tip and shown me how it's done, you know? Well, <laughs> yeah, I guess. Maybe, I hope maybe to never she, have to get a COVID test. Maybe I mean, just she keep had my fingers a big, crossed. <laughs> call out sheet and just had to it's she was really, looking for it it's really not bad i've had more painful time giving blood that's good to know though but yeah. i hate giving blood too mm-hmm. so. i do too <laughs> I that do doesn't too. help <laughs> but i mean this is better even well 
If it burned like that for 15 seconds, I would say it's a draw. But really, if you keep your head back as far as it will go, it really does help. And it seems like they're trying to make it easier. So now they're not going for like, let's scrape some gray matter with that yeah. test. Right. You know? <laughs> right. It's it's like, yeah. Well, the, the nurse who was doing my second one was really nice. And I said, come on. I said, not so deep. I said, if you go much deeper, you're going to hit stuff I can't really afford to lose. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Serena, you know? do you... Do you remember, every time I say Serena, my Siri goes up. Yeah, because I'm special. Mm-hmm. So special. It doesn't special. work when you call it by its name. Maybe that's the trick. Maybe I gotta yeah. call it by your you, name. It doesn't just happen to you, Jeff. It happens to all of my coworkers on video calls with me. Oh, funny. <laughs> oh really? Yeah, yeah, all the time. Well, do you remember when I had that esophagus thing and I'd have that cough all the time? Yes, I remember. Well, what they had to do was they wanted to check my swallowing, my esophagus. They wanted to measure oh, how yeah. much. Okay. Oh, that sounds horrible. Did they use so, a scope okay, wait. for that? No, oh. they use this long string thing. <gasps> to swallow okay. it? This is no. where I turn into they a quivering mass They go up your nose, they go up your nose, oh, and it goes and down and around, and it goes down. No, I don't have to swallow. They just they just <gasps> push it down, and it goes all the way down. So once it's all the way down towards oh, your stomach, oh. then when you swallow, it sends currents back to to oh, measure lovely. the contractions of the you esophagus. Feel it, Thanks like, for the going nightmares. Yeah, did it like shock not you? Not so much. Throat, but you when feel? they take oh. it out, they just go. Oh God! They just pull it right out like a wet noodle. <laughs> oh, just, my, God. my stomach oh. is dancing. You're gonna make us all like just oh. super sick. <laughs> And that, my friends, is why I really I hate doctors because knowing the crap they can do to you just scares the living uh, daylights out of me. Yeah. It'd be so much nicer if they would just tell you, but sometimes they don't even tell you; they just do it. It's all my fault for asking about the COVID test. I'm sorry, guys. No, <laughs> no, it's good. actually I'm glad no. you did because I didn't. That, that, I've been that so was curious good information. It. Incidentally, Stephen King has a new book out, which. I know it's I will resume Audible reading it as soon as we finish up. The <laughs> I'm going to read it this weekend. <laughs> I've been trying so hard to walk away all week. Like, no, you can't. You can't pick it up during the week. You cannot That's read the, the book Billy all night. Or whatever. You, yeah. I yeah, I, I have it, but I haven't started reading it. So I'm you have to let me know if, it, you have to tell me if it's good. I'm trying so hard to wait. Mr. Jesse. Yes, sir. What do you got coming up? Stephen King? <laughs> um, well, yeah, no. Um, I mean, I've been doing a lot of, uh, you know, I've been, the work has been really busy. Um, we're actually working on, it's actually kind of cool. We are still working on updating our transition loan library and kind of just some of the tools that we have available for demonstrations and stuff like that as well. And then uh, uh, some of our other techs are updating the equipment in our technology resource center lab and so we've been working a lot on that can you explain that the loan library it's for like transitioning sure. students so they can get a taste of a piece of equipment before a purchase is made yeah so ssb state services for the blind actually has two loan libraries now because we actually we had a little bit more money recently so we were better able to invest both in transition services for students and for our adult VR services and we basically were building up both of our libraries so the one that I work with I work with primarily transition students so high school early college and sometimes students will get technology that they can use in let's say K12 they'll they'll get technology through the school that they can use until they graduate and sometimes I'll meet with them for a technology assessment and we'll look at other possible technology options that maybe they didn't know about or that the you know the schools just didn't have and so you know depending on what their goal is after graduation should they need to learn some new skills some new technology experiment with you know a different type of technology like a portable CCTV or maybe use it for either getting like a summer job or a work experience through a trans transition program, we can loan out specific technology items for them to be able to use so they can try the device, learn it, see if it's something that works well for them or that doesn't. And then we have the adult loan library for, you know, again, somebody wants to try something to see if it works for them before we really make a final recommendation, or maybe they have a device and they're using it at work, but let's say they've got a smaller CCTV or a braille display and it breaks while well, they still have to do their job. Um, but in 
in the meantime, like if a device breaks or something and they send it in, you know, maybe we can loan them out a uh, replacement for a few weeks until it gets uh, replaced or something. So there's different scenarios and it's really individualized to, you know, like each person, they work with their counselor, they work with their assistive technology specialist. And then we, and then we of course have technology in our uh, technology lab resource room, whatever you want to call it. And people can come in and look at the technology there, try it there. We have things on, on hand. So when we do technology assessments with uh, people in the office or out in the field, um, you know, that we have the tech to be able to show them and have them try it out. Um, so yeah, that's really what I'm doing through work. And then outside of work, like I said, I've been not quite as many gaming or uh, consulting gigs uh, lately, but still working with Microsoft a little bit on the side through their low vision advisory board and um, the XR access program and uh, keeping up on the YouTube channel and even doing a little bit of uh, Twitch streaming on the weekends. It's actually gone pretty well. I've had a few people popping in. We've just had some kind of fun conversations and yeah, so just trying a bunch of different things and uh, keeping up on the drumming too. So there you go. Yeah. Rocky G, what do you got going on? Not too much. We're staying busy. This is a, typically a really busy time of year for us at work and a lot of things are keeping us busy there. We just finished up convention season with both conferences so it's nice to have a little bit of that behind us but now we've got some fall programming starting some new programming starting new products coming in new inventory of course it's all coming all at once updating our point of sale system in store to make in-store payments a little easier it's interesting you know to to be so involved with money and and selling and purchasing and procuring stuff and not have uh, i don't think i've touched cash in 16 months so it'll be really interesting to see when we put some of these things back in place for people to be able to do in-person transactions and have you know contactless payments and some of those things make the in-person in-store pickup side of things a little easier down the road and what else am i doing sleeping <laughs> um, there you go. I'm just I'm busy. Keep them busy. Yeah, I just saw a newsletter came out mm-hmm. from the lighthouse that their in person stuff is going to get delayed or set back a little bit. But that's happening all over the place. Things are changing rapidly. Yeah, I have a feeling we're going to have a backslide. Uh, even uh, talking to a lot of coworkers earlier in a meeting today, they're like, I wouldn't be surprised if we're going pretty much virtual again by mid September. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. Again, same as before, we want to make sure that even for those people who can't be vaccinated, that they have a safe place to come to. And even just traveling from point to point is getting really dangerous until we can get you know, a handle on this or get some more people vaccinated. I think it's just a matter of kind of bringing things online a little bit at a time and Mm-hmm. moving into it a little more gradually, really sitting and watching the data. That's really what it comes down to is watching every day what happens with the numbers and um, just doing what we can to get people vaccinated. I, I have a secret hope that we can, we, we were a vaccination clinic during the pandemic and I, I think it would be really cool to be able to do something like that again. Uh, this is just purely me speaking now, so maybe I, I shouldn't, you know, speak so forthrightly because I don't know how practical that is when, you know, we're all... Everyone's coming back to work, it seems, in shifts and, and um, moving their programs back into a different hybrid sort of way and reinventing things as we go. So mm-hmm. it's really hard to project, you know. A, a week ago we said one thing and now we're having to tread a little more cautiously. But fingers crossed we will do it very soon we really miss that's the one part of working in this community i will say that that we really do miss is a face-to-face when you have a new blind person i think there's nothing like being able to gather and be able to have some hands-on training and some hands-on face-to-face with products and yeah it's really you know we can talk all day but it's hard to get that face-to-face when you're virtual so serena how you doing how you doing? <laughs> there you go. What you got going? You set it up. You totally set it up. Work, work, and more work, you know? <laughs> mm-hmm. um, right now, we're planning for my son's birthday party. Um, he didn't get to have, you know, a traditional one last year, so he's getting a laser tag party at the end of the month. So Nice. That's fun. We're trying to figure out some fun things to do with that, but my full-time job's keeping me very busy, and then all the side work that I do, just like Jesse, it tends to take up a lot of the day, so staying busy. Miss Lisa. 
Well, things are pretty, fairly quiet right now in Hadley land. I think a lot of people are probably in vacation mode. We may have a little bit more contact with people as back to school approaches, but we really do have a lot of resources, a very wide variety. And if you haven't checked out the website in quite some time, I would encourage you to do that. And new content is being added often. I too have side jobs, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. My other side job, unfortunately, right now is still dealing with this long haul COVID. Because we record this late, you get me at, well, depending on your perspective, my best or my worst, because it's very cyclical in nature. And I struggle a lot more in the morning just to make sense of my thoughts. And usually by about six or so in the evening, I'm considerably better and I'm a bit better physically by then. That's why we don't record at 6 a.m. Oh, my goodness. Long haul COVID or no. I don't know my name then. It's bad. (laughs) I have two weddings coming up this month. Friends of mine, some of you know, the Mystic Access, Kim and Chris, are getting married and may already have tied the knot by the time this podcast comes out. And then my youngest sister is getting married at the end of August. It's going to be an outside wedding. Should be interesting. And... Besides playing with Sorty Quest more than I should. Um, <laughs> Thanks, Jesse. No. <laughs> Actually, I, do what I, think I, can. My, I think it was my fault, too. <laughs> I'm not really a gamer person that much, but I've kind of gotten into this one. But the other thing is, there is something on TV that I want to see, and it's going to be either the night of my sister's wedding or the day after when my family is getting together. I forget. And I thought, okay, I have this TV service, and I now have this DVR, and it's all doable on my phone. And so this past weekend, I sat down and taught myself how to use DVR, and I've been DVRing and watching old episodes of Little House on the Prairie. I still (laughs) love the one where Nellie's in the wheelchair, if anyone has seen that. What they should have called that one is Nellie Gets What's Coming to Her. And they didn't, but it was a thing of beauty. Mm -hmm. Um, So I got to watch that. It's really funny because on some things, my technology knowledge is very cutting edge. I mean, I'm playing with iOS 15 and the latest watch OS beta and such. And then you get to stuff like TV because I didn't have TV for years. And before that, I didn't have anything that was accessible. And so I'm still kind of on square one. So I'm having fun with with DVR. You know, something that I think is really neat about all of us is when we get something like Serena, you did the back tap stuff for skip forward, you know, you figured it out. Rocky, you're always figuring stuff out, gadgets and gadgets, and same with, you know, Jesse. It's just really neat that sometimes you just got to go home and practice, just kick it around a little bit. And that intrigue, that I think that's what all of us found out when we first started using technology. We were talking about when you first did a stylus or a slate or something, but when technology came around, this iPhone stuff, it's kind of fun to dig in and go drill down a little bit and find things out. If any of you have been digging around on stuff and have some really neat stuff that you found on the iPhones, whether it's in the betas or in, in the you're running on your daily driver, give us a call at 612-367-6093. We'd love to hear from you. One thing I kind of forgot to mention, I'm doing a, just a little bit of work for this website. They reached out to me not terribly long ago, and there's this kind of neat website. It's called Taming Gaming. What it based basically is is uh, this guy he started it and he wrote a book too the whole taming gaming thing is it's kind of about like it's a resource especially if geared toward families and it's geared toward parents you know there's so many games out there and you know there's games now just like movies or uh, you know anything else different content for all ages and this website really tries to highlight games that are family friendly or you can filter like if you're looking for a game of like i want to find you know this kind of genre of game but i want to avoid things that have a lot of violence or vulgar language or any number of other types of filters but one of the things that they recently added and they're still working on kind of adding to and implementing is there's a whole section for each game when you go to a game it gives you know the description a lot of the information of what you know what kind of content is in it but there's also a an accessibility section that they added and they're working on adding all of these tags for accessibility and they break them down into a whole bunch of different areas so like blind low vision physical cognitive just different ways so if like people are looking for games that have like a specific feature you know there's certain barriers that give 
people trouble. They can look and say, oh, well, this game has different difficulty modes, or this game has like game assists, or subtitles, or is clear in-game navigation, you know, so you can find where you're supposed to go easier. I mean, there's there's literally like probably a few dozen of these tags that can kind of really help narrow whether a game will be user-friendly or playable for you. So mm. it's kind of a neat thing, and I'm helping a little bit with the low vision aspect of uh, accessibility with that site. So I wish I would put something on Stephen King books like that, if it's going to scare the bejesus out of you, you know? Like, you know, some <laughs> books are mild, but some are, like, terrible, I've, you know? I've yeah. never read a Stephen King book, believe it or not. not uh, one. Start out easy. Take Pet Cemetery. Take that, that one doesn't on. sound isery, er, easy. Isery. I like the Green Mile. Now available, the new Stephen King book, Isery. <laughs> and from all of us here at Tech Abilities and Blind Abilities, stay well, stay strong, stay informed. And then cue our funky music, right? <laughs> And for more podcasts with the Blindness Perspective, check us out on the web at www.blindabilities.com, on Twitter at Blind Abilities, and give us a call at 612-367-6093. Leave us a message and let us know if we can put your voice on the next podcast. Drop us an email at info at blindabilities.com and download the free Blind Abilities app from the App Store and Google Play Store. That's two words, Blind Abilities. And from all of us here at Blind Abilities, through these challenging times... To you, your family, and friends, stay well, stay informed, and stay strong. I want to thank you for listening. Hope you enjoy it. And until next time, bye-bye. When we share what we see through through each each other's other's eyes, eyes, we can then then begin begin to bridge bridge the the gap between between the limited expectations and the reality reality of blind abilities. abilities. The realities of Of blind abilities.